This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. Just as we're about to go to air to talk about the legalization and normalization of marijuana, we get one of those incredible gifts from the heavens, a letter to the editor in this morning's Vancouver Sun, and this is part of it. It says, clearly none of Vancouver's pot shops meet the criteria to be called a dispensary. We're doing a great service to our community by trying to normalize marijuana as a harmless product, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. We deserve considerably more from our city council than the approach they have taken to address this problem. We need them to enforce the law and keep people safe. Well, leave it to the healthcare professionals, says this writer, to help the many patients in need of pain management, not entrepreneurs looking to make a fast buck. And the writer is a woman named Geraldine Vance. She's the CEO of the BC Pharmacy Association. It's possible she knows whereof she speaks. Let's make something really simple and clear, boys and girls. Marijuana is a commodity. It's like clothing, furniture, and automobiles. It's something for someone to sell. 95%, 99% of all of those clowns who are pretending that they need so-called medical marijuana, uh uh-uh, they just want to get high, as people always did with marijuana. What's the problem? (laughs) Well, let's investigate that. Uh, Pamela McCall was our guest way back when, I think Christmas of 2012, when she published a book, which you can see now on your screens, it was the night before Christmas, except she made one little change and the book went absolutely viral. Pamela, we'll get on to your new book and on to the marijuana issue in a second, but just to refresh everyone's memory, that you ended up on the Today Show and Colbert was making jokes about well, you. Well, Colbert did a spoof. He actually yeah. created a whole spoof on, on what I did. Yes. And uh, it, uh, it went all over the globe because I took out the smoking out of the most famous poem in the English language, which yes. some people found... Um, uh, something I should not have done. How often does Santa appear with his pipe in the regular version? Well, there's once think, or twice. There's 16 words, but oh. in some of the books, there's yes. many illustrations, including the cover, that kind of oh, he has glorify the smoking, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so not really. So you know. you're in your in your enthusiasm for non-smoking, you took took that out. That's right. And you had new artwork done. That's right. It's yeah. a beautiful book. Thank you. It's a, it's a fabulous book. I'm headed to Whistler. Yeah, um, too. Well, they've just made a smoke-free zone, and yes. so I'm going to sell the rest of the inventory I have to every hotel up there this coming Brilliant. Christmas. So I'm, yeah, I I'm, I'm thrilled when I heard that. I love it, I hope, and I hope somebody gives you a free suite. Yes, me yeah. too. <laughs> okay, now you have a new book out, which we're going to get to in a minute, called On Marijuana. Right. But first, let's let people know where you're coming from. You are, I don't know what your exact title is, even though we're good friends, but yeah. I know that you are the main push behind something called SAMC, Smart Approaches to Marijuana Canada. Right. So let's explain that. Sure. Uh, it's a national organization. It's a nonprofit. We started in 2014, and we went to Ottawa, and we met with, I think it was 45 MPs, and we presented our platform and our position on marijuana, which is that we oppose the legalization of marijuana, um, coming at this from a public health platform. Right. Um, and we also support the conventions of the United Nations, which Canada has signed four treaties with that we won't move to legalization. So I was at the United Nations in March in Vienna, and, uh, you know, met with a lot of people, including the Swedes, who are doing a great job of uh, prevention and spending a lot of money well, on it. What's the smart approach? Because it's not simply 
don't legalize. It's more complicated than that. Well, sure. You know, we put children first, and we put public health first, and uh, it's a. We're, what we're trying to do is is to have the legalization conversation and the decriminalization separated. One's a justice discussion. One's a public health discussion. One can move to a change in the way that we handle infractions for marijuana possession and use without going to full legalization. So, like many people who are pro marijuana, you would agree with them that you don't want people to spend two years in jail for smoking a joint. No, simple, yeah. well in this country, simple possession, you don't go to jail yeah. for simply yeah. sm smoking a joint, you know, yes. at this day and time. So, so you're not looking for people to, uh, uh, for a terribly punitive approach, you just don't want a normalization. Right, well I think one of the things that people yeah. misunderstand about prohibition, which we support, yes. um, is that prohibition is not eradication. You know, we're not looking at, you know, no one ever, ever smoking marijuana. That's that's an unrealistic goal. Of course. What we're trying to do is get the rates of use down to 2%, like in Sweden, or get it down to the 1980s, where it was 2% in this country. Right now, it's 86 for adults and 30 to 53% of grade 12 students. We lead the world with the highest use of youth by, of marijuana in the Western world, according to UNICEF. Um, that's a That's a very scary statistic. And I can tell you, uh, as a guy who does therapy with addicts every week, that we have this new kind of addict, and we have now thousands of them all the time, right. uh, where you can help people get off uh, cocaine, uh, uh, heroin, whatever, but they think smoking pot is just regular. <laughs> right. It's just like normal, man. Yes, well, you just sent me an email yesterday about they're selling in Washington State marijuana at Costco. Wholesale. Oh, yeah, Costco. <laughs> Costco's going to, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, this, it, this, I've Pick been, up half a salmon <laughs> and some corned beef and some bagels and your pot supply for the week. You know, and yeah. but I just talked to the state of Washington, and 13% yeah. of their marijuana is contaminated. They're going to recall it. In Denver, uh, two weeks ago, CBS News reported that the health authority seized $110 million of contaminated marijuana, which is contaminated with pesticides. Yes. And uh, that's going to do some major damage to the marijuana industry, industry in that in that town. Yeah, you me. also you also sent me something the other day about. Uh, is some gangsters with hoods over their heads holding up uh, oh. some dispensaries in L.A. Well, I was yeah. watching the news, you know, yeah. and, I, and the last thing I saw on the yeah. Vancouver news the other night was the two yeah. cars driving through dispensary windows, right? The the, the, the Oh, I didn't know Oh, that. yes, they drove their cars to the oh, windows oh, and, and oh, did that, what's oh, that called? Like... Slam and grammars, whatever it's called. <laughs> and that was the last thing I saw on the news, right? So the next morning I was Googling that to get that news story, yeah. and, and I Googled in robberies of dispensaries, and, the, and that came up in Los Angeles where the guy in the hooded mask can the gun shot a dispensary worker? Well, yeah. you know, in this city, those 93 dispensaries, they're yeah. not covered by work, work Safe BC. They're right. not insured, yeah. you know, so. Let me see if I understand this. Mm -hmm. Do we have, are there places anywhere in the world where you can drive through and get a drink? In other words, can you, are, are there drive through bars? Uh, you can't drive through and say, I'll have a Manhattan, please glug and keep driving. So, so no. we're going to have people, dri they drive through and pick up their pot and s smoke around and keep driving? I think I know what I'll do. <laughs> I'll go on the San Diego freeway now that I'm high as a kite. That'll be a fun trip. Yes, yes. No, or go to yeah. work. Like, look at the forest industry in British Columbia, right? The study out of WorkSafe BC. I'm not sure it was a WorkSafe BC study, but it was a study done by one of their um, researchers, you know, that shows yes. that the the BC coroner attributed 33% of fatalities in the forest industry to going to work under the influence of cannabis and driving a vehicle or having an accident and dying. A lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> estimate that minimum 50% of all laborers mm -hmm. uh, start the day by smoking a joint. Wow. Yeah, anyway, tell us first, and we're gonna talk about all the, the lunacy of this subject, uh, but tell us first about the book on marijuana, because sure. this, this is your latest. When did this come out, about six months ago? Well, I, I think September. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, I wanted to do something, and I have a background in publishing with Twas, yes. and I uh, had a lot of research. I've been studying this for about two years. I, yes. find, I find the conversation over marijuana um, fascinating. I mean, anybody who's not involved in this is missing an enormously entertaining, and, 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 and <laughs> yes. it really is. I mean, from yeah. the guys driving their cars through windows to yeah. the brain science to the you know drug driving, to all of this. It, it, it's a fascinating conversation. Yeah. And it involves politics. It involves um, um, ideas of the rights of a citizen, the rights of liberty, the rights of... Um, 
the protection of a child. I mean, yes. it, there's so much to it, right? Yeah, it, it, involves, it, it involves, for example, our city manager, who apparently is a doctor, I didn't know that, mm -hmm. claiming all these wonderful attributes for marijuana, as if she's some sort of a scientific expert on this subject, including that marijuana is very good for getting off other drugs. So Dr. Evan Wood, he and I have never agreed on anything on these subjects, and we agree completely, what is she talking about? Well, because he's considered the addictions medicine specialist in the province, and he says, she's nuts, she's wrong. That there's no proof that smoking marijuana is some kind of a, a remedy for alcoholism or heroin addiction. Or tobacco cessation. She mentions yeah. tobacco. No, I had emails yeah. from doctors too who are addiction specialists who's saying, it, and, and senior yeah. people, right, yeah. who said that they can't find any evidence or any suggestion of any study even. Like they, they, they can't find what she's talking but about. But this is our 300 grand a year city manager. Yes, who we've challenged her job. We've, we've put in a request that she be fired or resign immediately. Did you? Yes, we did. Sam C. did? Yes, we did. Very good. Yes, By the way, did. we should throw in that the founder of Sam C. used to, was the drug czar in the White House? Under whom? Well, that was in, in America. Yes. Kevin Sabat and yes. Patrick Kennedy and David Frum yes. started SAM. Um, and we are, but we are Canadians. We're, I, not, I we're not funded by them in any no, possible way. No, I understand way. it's separate. Um, but yes, they did. They did. Patrick Kennedy came at this because of his own challenges with addiction. Yeah. And, he, yeah. and also his, um, his uh, concern over the brain and what marijuana does to the brain especially yeah. of youth, right? So that's where he comes, mental health. Patrick Kennedy, that's his, yeah. that's his yeah, issue, I, right, his I, mental I health, um, which is ours as well. Um, but, uh, you know, we're extremely um, conscious of being Canadian. Okay, you know, so, so let's go back to on marijuana. Did yeah. you, okay, so we got so just a couple of minutes before we take a break. So you published the book, and the book is, as I recall, what, about 20 chapters? Yes, well, yeah. getting to your question, yeah. the reason I did on marijuana yes. was because I was reading all these very eloquent, like your own article in there, very well you know, documented, researched, footnoted yep. papers. And I thought, you know, really what Canadians are missing here is a conversation and, and the facts about marijuana. And they need to hear from the scientists and they need to hear from people like you who've spent your career in these issue, on these issues. And so I put the book together because what's, what, what has happened is that in Canada on marijuana, we're where we were in 1964 with tobacco. We in have the sense, science. What sense? We have the science, but the yeah. public doesn't get it because they've got this pot lobby telling them all this propaganda and yes. fighting very reputable people who have the science behind them. What use, if any, can you make of the recent, is it a Supreme Court decision against the three major tobacco companies? It just came out yesterday, I think, yes. a billion dollars to- Oh, no, no, it was many- Several billion? Oh, no, no, many, many billion. <laughs> oh, many billion. We're suing them. I'm actually on that campaign. Yes. And um, I'm one of the board of directors, and we actually are suing the Canadian public actually has a claim for $100 billion against the tobacco industry. Only 10% of people in Canada actually know that we're suing. So we have potential to do major damage, but the tobacco industry, as you saw in yeah. the last couple of days, they're appealing that, and they, they've been appealing it forever. So tell so. me, so we have 30 seconds to our break, so it must be very difficult for you to watch Mad Men, where, where, where the series, the TV series Mad Men, where one of their clients is Lucky Strike, and they never stop. Everybody on the show smokes all the time. Well, the thing you have to remember about Mad Men, or yes. what I do, is yes. I'm the exact same age as Sally. Y yes, exactly. Draper. Yes, and yes. my father's name was Don, and he lived the life. So. Ouch. <laughs> we're going to take a little break, and while we come back, we're going to continue this conversation with Pamela McCall about uh, the legalization and normalization of marijuana. And I know we all have very different opinions about this, but ours is the most important, believe me. Uh, a quick moment for you to send a note to davidburner.com and uh, an opportunity for those lovely people who support us here to say hello on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Back in a second. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of BC. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, 
Building Recovery That Works. And speaking of the promotion of marijuana, two of our favorite media outlets, CKNW Radio, for whom I worked, with whom I worked for a great many years, uh, under whom I worked for a great many years, and the Georgia Strait, for whom I've done the occasional article, they are both being told to knock it off. Knock what off, Pam? Well, we went to Health Canada and we yes. went to everybody else who regulates advertising in this country and pointed yes. out the fact that it is illegal to advertise marijuana or an acarlic, and uh, we actually complained about the West Ender, the Georgia Strait, CKNW, yes. and Fox 99.3. Yes. Um, and I saw those letters yesterday, and I actually have polls that show that 0% of parents support the advertising of marijuana. So Sam Canada um, advanced that position and, and fought hard to get the government to do something because we know we have the public behind us on this issue. The use of marijuana is a conversation, but the promotion of drugs to children, nobody supports. It's very interesting, Pam, that, mm -hmm. uh, that clearly America and Canada are very different places in mm -hmm. many regards, and one is this. All of the three major commercial TV networks, the old ABC, CBS, NBC, mm -hmm. all of their six-hour, supper-hour newscasts are all sponsored by pharmaceuticals. Everything that could happen to a person is advertised on those, sh on those shows, right? But, but the only reason we get to see them is because we, we can see those stations. But we don't do that in Canada. We don't advertise Viagra or the 42, right. psychotropic, uh, 42 million psychotropic drugs that are available. We don't do that, do we? No, no. And we're not allowed to. No. So, so why would CKNW, which claims to be a big part of the community, why would they be promoting uh, pot dispensaries? Well, because there's 93 of them, and there's a lot of money involved here. <gasps> oh, and, hey, money, money, I <laughs> forgot, money. <laughs> I think yeah. we're looking for a revenue stream. I, I mean, it's advertising, it's money, right? I mean, Google, what I found yes. fascinating was Google was just, they just had to pay $500 million to the US government because they were advertising a Canadian pharmaceutical, Google. Really? And Google even said, whoops, we shouldn't have done that. Here's 500 million. So the government yesterday of Canada said to CKNW, yes. Yes. I, I read the letter, and yes. it, and it says, say? well, I'm not, yeah. we don't know if they're going to follow up with charges and fines. Yeah. They may. And, you know, and I think that the... But they have said beware. They've waved their They've finger. said we have not ruled out yes. sanctions and, okay. and penalties. So the thing that I think will happen in this city and in this country is you're going to see some, you're going to see some high-profile arrests you're going to see some really? hot, oh absolutely you're going to yes. see some very big people called out on this and that's what it's going to take you know it's going to take a very big arrest well if if the head of fifa can be shamed into resigning why couldn't some people be arrested on this issue? Well, you know, yeah. I went to the United States. I was in California for yes. four, five days a couple yes. weeks ago, and I was talking to the attorney generals down there. And what they've done, in California, 1996, they legalized medical mar marijuana for medical purposes. Yes. Right now, 88% of the towns and cities in California have banned them or have moratoriums, why? including San Diego and Palo Alto. In San Jose, there's yes. no dispensaries allowed in the city. They have to be in industrial areas because they experience the damage. And so they went to their city council and said, not here. Colora did, Colorado, over 80% of the towns in Colorado, including Colorado Springs, yes. no dispensaries here. And if it's I'm, just Denver. And really. if I'm not mistaken, the governor of Colorado has backtracked? Oh, he was never for it. Yes. Um, he was never for it. And uh, the governor of Colorado and the attorney general have said it was a mistake and don't do this repeatedly. And and well, they're being sued by everybody. Right? That's And there's something happening with the neighboring states? What are the Nebraska and Oklahoma are both suing them, as is the Holiday Inn. Suing who? The governor and the attorney general. And they're suing people like the hydro company that let these companies have power. They're suing delivery people, anybody who put any paint on the building, anybody who delivered anything to them, anybody. It's called profiteering from a crime which is what they did in Parksville, British Columbia, where they shut down the dispensary and issued a letter to the landlord saying, if you reopen, it's an open question, we could charge you with profiting from a crime, right? right. So you can't, help, you can't aid and abet. 
So what we've done is we've said it's an open question because 23 letters, 23 letters went out to different counties in California from the Attorney General saying it's an open question if we can charge you for conspiring to violate federal law. So what we've said is to Penny Ballum, yes. it's an open question if you've been conspiring to violate the federal law of this country. You can't do that. Now, right? one, of, now one of the interesting, uh, f pathetic, facetious arguments that, that have come from the pot enthusiasts, of yeah. course, is that by legalizing pot, we will end all the criminality. So, so we mentioned you know, 15 minutes ago, California guys are walking in with hoods over their faces and guns, you know. And, I mean, it's the so-called medical marijuana business is rife with criminality. Well, the New York I, Times, I mean, look what the New York Times said about Colorado. I mean, yes. crime's booming. It's booming. <laughs> and, the, and the Attorney General of Colorado said the same thing. She said, she told a whole room full of Attorney Generals from all over the country, yes. don't believe that. Like, don't believe that. That's ridiculous. 40% yeah. of the marijuana being sold in Colorado right now is still going through the black market. And 40% is being bought by people coming into the state who are tourists. It's ridiculously out of control. And um, the citizens of Colorado, as they have in California, have taken back their cities, have taken back their towns, and they've said, not here. And then you come to Vancouver, which is a complete gong show. We have 93 of these. Guess how many in Manitoba? I'm going to guess uh, seven. One. One. That How many, many in Nova Scotia, which has the highest use of marijuana by adults in the whole country? Guess. I, I give up. Zero. Zero. Yeah. So how Penny Ballum can yeah. criticize the federal government and say it's their fault, it's their fault, when we have 93 in one city, yes. we have 18 in Victoria, and Alberta has 12. How many do we have in the West or two. End? Alberta many, has 12. How two. many do we have in the West End? About 10? Oh, I don't know, but you know, I, just came, I just came from Commercial Drive. Yes. There's a daycare with two on the same block, right? Two. That's the same block as the daycare. And the daycare principal told me that yeah. before they do a fire drill, she has to go outside and make sure there's nobody in the back lane smoking in their playground, and there's no needles because there's an increase in needles all over the ground since these medical marijuana dispensaries showed up. How could there be needles when <laughs> our government is so good at getting people to... Yeah, you know, have free needles and, and be on methadone, and they're so helpful to everybody. I'm just shocked that there are needles. More needles since really? these dispensaries and showed up. Yes. Is that surprising to you? Yeah, that, oh, it's just... Hey, that's not just a shocker, you know? <laughs> and, this, and this city council and mayor are considering letting... This is what they said. Yeah. We're going to not let edibles be sold, but we're going to let cooking oil. These people are not making popcorn. Cooking oil? 90% is BHO. What do you mean, what do you what, mean marijuana it's cooking oil? Yeah, it's, it's what the most dangerous form of marijuana. They <laughs> put it in e-cigarettes or vapor and pull their little brains out. And these people go, we're going to let them sell cooking oil. Are you nuts? Well, I, mean, I guess one of the questions <laughs> I have is, don't these people have anything better to do with their time? I'm talking about the city fathers. But what's that company that, <laughs> I, what's that, company that I'm mildly obsessed with that I mentioned? Oh, me or, too, me too. Privateer Holdings. Privateer Holdings. Yeah, we're both obsessed. Yeah, it's a very interesting company. And I yes. encourage, uh, boys and girls, I encourage you to look it up. Privateer Holdings. And read the, the, the board of directors. Because it's like reading the board of directors of IBM. These are all highly skilled, highly accomplished, sophisticated people, especially sophisticated in marketing. And what's their business? Pot. Yeah, I know, I know. So, so clearly, you know, people have seen the land. They've seen the gold rush. And this is what it's all about. It's about making money. Well, what's funny? It's not about freedom. No, oh God, no, yeah. no it's not. Yeah. And uh, I... Um, I was yesterday trying to find out why the VPD aren't pursuing the, uh, let's see, who is it? Georgia Strait reported that there are at least three of the federal licensed marijuana distributors yes. selling to these, dis these dispensaries, which is completely illegal, right? So I said to the VPD, why aren't you doing something about that? Yeah. And they said, well, we don't have time for that right now. When we get around to it, you know, we'll do something. But what they're, what they're saying is it's not a high priority, but when you've got the high use of of, of adolescents using this stuff, and you and I both know the damage yeah, potential. Yes, yes, yeah, of course. How on earth is the magnitude of the group using this product and the risk they're exposed to not a high priority? Now, you're, you're you know? scheduled to go. And by the way, we should add that the twin boys who were on the show Help. recently, uh, Connor and... Duncan. And Duncan. Uh, uh, 
who braved the 420 event with their oh, with their yeah, t-shirts. Something else to be but, seen, but, but they are part of Sam C. They're yes. part of your organization. Yes. Now you are going to go to City Hall at well, to some hearing, or you're thinking about well, it. Well, June the 10th is yes. the public hearing, and okay. um, I've been just. I mean, I, I've, I'm sure that City Hall must think that I'm just. You know, I've been bombarding them with data, yes, yeah. and I'm trying my very best. Yeah. Um, I think they're squandered because of the public hearing to read emails until the actual event, and then they're allowed to look at everything. So I've been you know, really sort of, you know, but you're really but, going but, at it. But, but Pam, but, you're concerned about going. Well, that's the thing. The goal is to go on June the 10th and speak. I'm, I'm speaker number three, which is right at the beginning. Yes. Um, but I have been warned by a pri private investigator that that might be a very dangerous thing for me to do. I don't want these kids hurt. I. They're very, I talked to them on the phone last night. They really want to come. Yeah. We're citizens of the city. We care about this issue. Um, we want to be able to say something. I've been meeting with daycares. I've been meeting with um, business owners. And people are scared. And I think that we have to decide what kind of a society we want to live in. And we have to get some help here. We've got to get some support. And we've got to make public process safe. And, you know, I'm not living in some bubble here. You know, like, I understand the risks. But I'm absolutely not going to let the world go to, you know, <laughs> go down the tubes without are gonna, standing are up. Gonna, are they going to hold this at City Hall? Same what sit, I think. At, at yes. City Council? Mm -hmm. But uh, it'll be packed. They'll, well, have, to hold they, they'll have to hold it at Rogers Arena. Well, no, it's not. I just yeah. checked in. There's not that many people. Like Dina Larson has yes. been holding workshops on how to run a dispensary. Um, so he's he's been doing a lot. <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine this is your life's work. How to no, run seriously. a bunch. But he's raising money to pay team. patients to come and speak. So yeah. I've got that documentation, yeah. right? So, um, but why don't we buy a little island in the Gulf somewhere and move Dana and Mark Emery and his and his wife, and they can go and live there and smoke their brains out. We have to quit. We have to yeah, stop. I know. <laughs> Pam, Thank you. always great to see you. Okay, boys and girls, that's it for our rant today about uh, marijuana. Next week, the Community Safety Act. Well, this was brought in with huge fanfare by the provincial government two years ago, but opposition MLA Bruce Ralston says, huh? Where is it? Where's the safety? What are we doing about this? That's coming up on next week's show. Thanks so much for being with us here on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Good night.